Johan Rupert, on behalf of the Sunday Times and the Sunday Times Top 100, congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. It's that word achievement that I would like to pick up on first, if I may. Often it's a, a very amorphous word. As far as you're concerned, what does it mean and how do you measure achievement? Once you have more than you ever thought you would ever get, in terms of material wealth, then in a sense you realize that they're more important things. But I tell my kids, before you can do good, it helps to do well. So having done well, our dividends now are substantially more than the market value of all the companies uh, under our control when I started. So today our dividends are a multiple of the market cap. So it gives you the freedom to share. And in a sense, that's what drives me. So when you say achievement, I guess it's the pleasure that my wife and I are having right now in providing bursaries and feeding schemes, etc. I think that in the end is the real measure of success. Johan Rupert, have you reached the point now where you're starting to think about legacy and what your legacy actually means? People often ask, so what did I enjoy most? Uh, Rembra, Richmond, whatever. I would say business partner that we started in 1979 and we've created nearly 700,000 jobs. That's the kind of legacy that I think I'd like to leave. And uh, trying to finish what my late brother started here on the farm. I would never have gone into wine farming, ever, if he hadn't died, never. I was perfectly happy to collect wine with him, and I drank a lot of very good wine. What I love about this, and farming in general, but wine especially, in industry, if we design a prop product properly, a watch or something, at the end, if we do everything correctly, I know it's going to end up perfect. Here, you do everything properly. You pick the right terroir, the soil, the right viticulturalist to prepare everything properly. And then two weeks before, you either have a heat wave before the harvesting season or you get hail or something. So it keeps you very, very humble. Agriculture keeps you very humble because you're never quite sure until the end. You're talking tonight to an audience of leaders right across the spectrum. In your long business career, what are the leadership lessons uh, that you've learnt and that you can impart? Culture beats PowerPoint any time of the day and you set the tone and the culture at the head office and right at the top. And if you set the right culture for organization, then the loyalty that must go both ways can set in. So, leading on from that, how do you set the tone and the culture and when do you know when to recalibrate it? We have a rule, don't do anything that you won't, and it's actually quite appropriate for tonight, that you don't want to see on the front page of the Sunday Times. I think it was a year or so ago you said that um, South Africa's economic growth was not enough to repay current debt. Has that outlook changed at all? Are you feeling a little more optimistic? Jeremy, I'm concerned globally. How do you repay debt? You either repay debt by increased earnings, should I say taxes in the hands of government, preferably through economic growth, or you make the debt worth less by depreciating the debt. Now, in the United States, they're in the fortunate position. They mainly own, owe in their own currency. For those currencies or countries that have borrowed in foreign currencies, it's not that easy. But there is a real incentive 
for central bankers worldwide to issue a lot of debt and then to create inflation. However, we cannot grow without foreign capital. And in order to keep the RAND to where it is, our real interest rates are pretty high, which stifles growth in South Africa. So the poor reserve bank, uh, they've got to keep the currency stable, otherwise we're in serious trouble. Unlike what some cabinet ministers believe, who believe we should depreciate the RAND. Well, let them face the taxi drivers when the petrol price goes sky high. I'm not sure, entirely sure, that the people understand the implications of a downgrade. Foreign institutions won't have an option. They have to sell. And we can't fund abroad. We will have a hike in interest rates. Our banks will be downgraded. Our state-owned enterprises will obviously be downgraded. And we could have a fiasco of such enormity that the protests against service delivery will be really, really small. So when you see people who, who just don't get it, then Obviously, one is concerned. On the other hand, should they make the changes that are so obvious? I believe we can fix it, but I don't think we'll fix it the way we're going now. We need to decide, we need to educate the children, but we need to feed them. Because for many of these kids in the Eastern Cape, for instance, the only meal they get is the meal at school. Now, I keep on telling my friends, losing a rugby test is not a tragedy. A hungry child is a tragedy. A kid without education is a tragedy. And surely we have a lot of things, commonality of interest. I mean, I d don't disagree with Julius Malema. I haven't for 80% of things that he says. How to get there is another matter. But education, surely it's got to be one of our absolute concerns as all South Africans. So as a result of that then, do you think that business needs to speak out more? You know, in the end you live with your own conscience. Do you know how many people never knew anything during Nazi Germany? And one day their grandchildren may ask them, but Grandpa, didn't you know anything? And if you did, why didn't you speak out? We, I suspect that in 40 years, 30 years time, some of the ANC leaders and the leaders of state-owned enterprises may have difficulty in facing their grandchildren. 